Welcome to Mouth Care for Residents in Continuing Care. This module is Daily Mouth Care Plan. The module introduces key concepts in an effective mouth care plan, mouth care levels of care based on the resident's level of independence, the mouth care protocol for basic mouth care, and mouth care protocol for modified mouth care. The mop as you go brushing technique for choking and swallowing risk, the amount of toothpaste used for resident management, proper brushing technique, and products for mouth care with guidelines for selection and storage. Alberta Health Services has developed a mouth care training program to support health care providers in continuing care facilities to address the mandatory daily oral health care needs of residents, recognizing that good oral health is an integral component of the resident's physical, social, and emotional health and well-being. The framework of the program has four parts. One, the mouth care planning with the Rye MDS oral assessment tool in a mouth care decision trees format. Two, an oral care plan tool based on the Rye outcome scales that identify the resident's level of independence. Three, daily mouth care plan with appropriate support and strategies for managing challenging behaviors. And four, the referral to dental professionals for treatment as required. Each member of the health care team, the health care aides, registered and licensed practical nurses, and dental professionals all play a role in supporting the residents with their oral health. Welcome to this session on daily mouth care. An effective mouth care plan. Who needs a plan? Each resident needs to have an individual mouth care plan as part of their overall care plan. Who should be included in the plan? Independent residents who perform their own mouth care, residents who need complete support for mouth care. All residents need a mouth care plan. And what are the benefits of a plan? A plan provides you and the staff with information on how to support the resident with their mouth care. A plan helps you follow the best protocol for performing mouth care two times a day or more often if needed. There are four basic principles to this plan. Provide the appropriate level of care needed to support the resident. Ensure mouth care is done two times per day, morning or day shift and evening or night shift. Perform mouth care with a soft toothbrush that is the right size for the patient's mouth. A small narrow toothbrush may be most effective and use a fluoride toothpaste to protect the teeth and root surfaces from cavities. The fluoride, calcium and phosphate in the toothpaste is left in the mouth after brushing to help maintain a healthy mouth, especially for a resident with less saliva or a dry mouth. Mouth care planning with the rye. The mouth care planning with the Rye tool is based on the disablement progression model. Most residents in continuing care are in various stages of physical loss, cognitive loss, recognizing and understanding things, or both. The RN uses the resident's ability to perform activities of daily living, the ADLs, and their cognitive performance status the CPS scores, to determine the type of oral health care support the resident needs. Level 1, no loss, indicates the resident can do activities of daily living and has no loss of cognitive skills. The residents in this category may only need assistance to get ready to brush their teeth. According to the RIE data in Alberta, 7% of ADL to 19% of CPS residents fall into this category. Level 2, early loss, indicates residents in early stages of disablement who may struggle with personal hygiene tasks. These individuals will need caregivers to act as coaches to assist with getting organized and keeping on task. According to the RIE data in Alberta, 10% of ADL scores to 15% of CPS residents fall into this category. Level 3. 
Middle loss are residents showing challenges with locomotion and toileting tasks. Assistance becomes more involved. As cognition declines, different strategies can be used to keep the resident involved in their personal care. According to the RIE data in Alberta, 50% in the ADL to 40% in the CPS scores residents that fall into this category. Level 4. Late loss in the disablement model indicates residents are challenged with feeding themselves. These residents will require full support for their mouth care. This level of mouth care has another set of management strategies for challenging behaviors and these will be reviewed in the module on managing challenging behaviors. According to the RIE in Alberta, 34% of the ADL to 25% CPS residents fall into this category. Note at the bottom of the slide, residents with aggressive behavior scale scores greater than 3 may benefit from a two-person assist. There are a small number of residents who will exhibit aggressive behavior or extreme responsive behavior. It may require two staff to support their daily mouth care from both the point of efficiency and time. These residents who require two-person assist n need to be addressed and coordinated with the staff rather than no mouth care being performed. Guidelines for Mouth Care Protocol No matter what level of support a resident may need, there are two protocols for mouth care, the basic mouth care or the modified mouth care. The difference in protocols is the resident's ability to manage fluids without choking or coughing. The saliva, excess water, and amount of toothpaste are the fluids to consider. Is there a confirmed swallowing problem? or is the resident on a mechanically altered diet or thickened fluids? If no, use the basic mouth care protocol. Apply the water-based moisturizer to the lips before mouth care. Use a grain of rice to a pea-sized amount of fluoridated toothpaste. Encourage the resident to spit out excess saliva, debris, and toothpaste. Do not rinse the mouth or drink immediately after the toothpaste and apply the water-based moisturizer to the lips after the mouth care. The difference with the modified mouth care is that the toothbrush will be moistened with water only. Use the mop-as-you-go technique to remove saliva and debris. Apply a rice-sized amount of non-foaming fluoride toothpaste 
and use the mop and go as technique to remove saliva and excess toothpaste. Do not rinse the mouth or drink immediately afterwards and apply the water-based moisturizer to the lips after care. The tooth tape the toothpaste display on the right shows visually how much toothpaste is needed to get the health benefits from toothpaste without increasing the choking risk. This will be covered in more detail in an upcoming slide, as well as the toothbrushing technique. The toothbrushing technique for both protocols are the same. Personal Protective Equipment IPC best practice protocols for continuing care indicate the following practices should be considered when performing mouth care procedures like brushing of natural teeth and gums, the care of soft tissues, all denture care, and oral assessments. Before each resident care encounter, do a risk assessment of the task, the resident, and the environment. Blood and body fluids for mouth care will include saliva for all residents and may include blood for some residents. Will your hands be exposed to blood and body fluids? Definitely. Wear non-sterile gloves. Perform hand hygiene before and after glove use. Will your eyes and face be splashed or sprayed with blood or body fluids? Toothbrushing is considered a droplet producing activity. Wearing eye protection and a mask is in your best interest. Personal protective equipment. Mouth care includes brushing of natural teeth and gums, care of soft tissues, all denture care, and oral assessments. During mouth care, saliva will be encountered, blood may be encountered, and nasal secretions may be encountered. Wear non-sterile gloves. Perform hand hygiene before and after glove use for all mouth care. Make sure your gloves fit properly. Poorly fitting gloves decrease visibility for providing mouth care, increases your chance of being bitten, and if a piece of the glove is bitten off by the resident, it could be a choking risk for them. You will need to follow the guidelines and procedures of your facility for personal protective equipment. Toothpaste amounts. How much toothpaste should you use? What do you think? Do you need a toothbrush full of toothpaste? The amount of toothpaste to use depends on the resident's ability to spit, their swallowing difficulties, and their risk of choking. Looking at the yellow toothbrush, if your patient has no swallowing concerns, use a pea-sized amount. If your resident has difficulty spitting or has swallowing problems, use a grain of rice size amount. If your patient is on thickened fluids or is at risk of choking, dip the, water, dip the brush in water or club soda and shake off the excess liquid if you are brushing with no suction. It is the action of the brushing that removes the plaque and the debris, not the amount of toothpaste. Water only, a grain of rice, or a pea-sized amount of toothpaste is recommended depending on the resident and their ability to spit, their swallowing difficulties, and their risk of choking. Toothbrushing reduces food debris, it reduces plaque, which is a sticky layer of bacteria or germs, it restores the gum tissue to a healthier state by massaging the gums, and it prevents diseases including cavities in the teeth, gum disease like gingivitis, and lung problems or aspiration pneumonia. We emphasize two things, the angle of the brush and the motion of the brush. The angle of the brush is a 45 degree angle. 
the left picture is showing this position of the bristles, so they are tipped at a 45 degree angle to reach the area where the tooth and the gum meet together along the gum line. The right hand picture shows positioning the toothbrush bristles pointing directly at the teeth or at a 90 degree angle. You want to avoid this 90 degree position as it can cause pain to the resident when the brush is moved back and forth. Residents may react to this pain by pushing your hand away or the brush away. It may not mean that they don't want their teeth brushed, but it could be that it is hurting their gums. Reangle your brush to 45 degrees. The 90 degree angle position is also not an effective position of the brush to remove plaque along the gum line. The motion that you would use is a short back and forth vibrating motion. The brush should not move in an up and down motion or get flicked across the teeth where it increases aerosols of bacteria and the risk of spreading this bacteria and debris to you, the caregiver, or others. Why is brushing so important? Brushing is the key infection prevention procedure in mouth care. It prevents both gum infections or gingivitis and tooth decay or cavities. This picture is showing generalized gum redness, swelling and inflammation with bleeding when brushing and it is called gingivitis. Bleeding will occur with brushing of these teeth. The treatment for these bleeding gums is to provide daily brushing to remove the debris and the bacteria and to massage the gums. If daily brushing is thorough and consistent, bleeding will lessen each day and gum health will improve. Think about something. The surface area of the gum and tissue in the mouth could be represented by the surface of a tennis ball or a mandarin orange. Think about peeling that mandarin orange to represent the approximate size of the mouth and gum tissue. Compare this potential wound size to a comparable one on the arm or the leg. If this large of an area of the body was infected and bleeding, it would need to be cared for every day. Gums are just as important. When they are swollen and inflamed and bleed, they allow bacteria to enter the body and can spread infection to other parts of your body. Gingivitis is reversible though. It may resolve in one to two weeks with thorough brushing along the gum line. However, if it is not resolved, then a professional cleaning by a dental hygienist is required. Is your brushing technique effective? Why is brushing so important? Besides preventing gum infections or gingivitis, brushing also prevents cavities. For older adults, cavities or tooth decay are more common along the gum line of teeth than in younger people. Brushing thoroughly along the gum line with the brush at a 45 degree angle will break up the plaque that causes the cavities. Decay can eat through the neck of the tooth and cause the tooth to break off at the gum line. Look for teeth broken off with root tips still in the jawbone. These roots can easily become infected, but they need to be removed by the dentist. Root decay can happen quickly in a dry mouth. A healthy mouth of a dementia patient who declines rapidly and proves challenging to provide mouth care and left on their own can have root decay similar to what is shown in these photos. Fillings of these teeth in this stage of decay will be difficult and some teeth may need to be extracted. The cost of treatment will be extensive. Prevention and perseverance with daily mouth care is important. How to prevent cavities? Brush thoroughly along the gum line with the brush at a 45 degree angle to help disrupt the plaque. Apply toothpaste with fluoride after brushing to help protect the teeth. Avoid rinsing the toothpaste out to keep the fluoride in the mouth longer. Reduce sugary snacks or drinks 
and use saliva substitutes to increase moisture in the mouth. The tooth brushing technique. This is the brushing technique in a picture or diagram format. Place the brush at a 45 degree angle against the tooth, making certain that the bristles are at the gum line. Gently brush the surface of each tooth along the gum line using a short, gentle, back and forth vibrating motion. Two, brush the outside surface of each tooth, upper and lower, keeping the bristles angled against the gum line. Again, using the short, back and forth vibrating motion. Three, repeat the same method on the inside surfaces of the teeth. Four, to clean the inside surfaces of the front teeth, tilt the brush vertically and make several gentle vibrating motions using the tip of the brush. Five, brush the chewing surfaces of the teeth using a short back and forth motion. And six, brushing the tongue will remove bacteria and freshen the breath. Bacteria and debris on the tongue can cause bad breath, so regular brushing can improve breath odor. Were you given a demonstration tooth model and toothbrush? If so, practice the brushing technique on the tooth model. Outside, inside, the lower front teeth, and the top chewing surfaces using a short back and forth motion. There is a printable handout for this toothbrushing technique. Let's review the basic mouth care protocol. Apply water-based moisturizer to the lips before each episode of mouth care. Brush two times daily or more often if needed. Use a grain of rice or pea-sized amount of toothpaste. Angle the toothbrush at 45 degrees and gently vibrate along the gum line. Brush the outside surfaces. Move to the inside surfaces of the teeth. Brush the chewing surfaces and gently brush the tongue. Encourage the resident to spit out excess saliva, debris, and toothpaste. However, they may swallow the small amount of toothpaste. Do not rinse the mouth or drink immediately after brushing. Apply water-based moisturizer to the lips after mouth care. Rinse the toothbrush thoroughly and stand the bristles end up in a cup to air dry. If a toothbrush is left upside down or immediately covered with a holder after brushing, it can increase the growth of bacteria on the toothbrush. Always let the toothbrush air dry bristles up. The modified mouth care protocol focuses on managing saliva and debris in the mouth to reduce the risk of aspiration, that is, breathing in liquids, debris, and bacteria during the mouth care. This mop-as-you-go technique is used for individuals with swallowing problems, those who are confined to bed, and those who exhibit responsive behavior to toothpaste. Using a brush moistened with water may help reduce challenging behaviors. There are three key differences between the basic and the modified mouth care protocols. One, with the modified mouth care protocol, brushing is accomplished with a moist toothbrush and no toothpaste. Two, the saliva and debris is collected on a towel throughout the brushing. Three, fluoride toothpaste is applied to the teeth after the brushing to help protect the teeth. Rinse the toothbrush out frequently during the brushing. Swipe debris and saliva forward and wipe it on the cloth. Continue this process for all areas of the mouth. With the modified mouth care protocol, you apply the toothpaste after brushing the teeth. The slide on the left is showing the caregiver's glove. The clear fluid is the water-based moisturizer and the blue is the toothpaste. 
You want to apply these to your glove prior to the mouth care for easy access of these products when it is time to apply the toothpaste. After cleaning the teeth with water, dab the toothbrush into the toothpaste for a rice sized amount and apply to the teeth. Use the mop as you go technique to remove any excess saliva or toothpaste. Do not rinse the mouth after the toothpaste and apply the water-based moisturizer after care. Let me tell you a story. Leon is a middle-aged man with end-stage multiple sclerosis. He consumes only pudding, thickened fluids and experiences choking episodes with every meal. Generally, staff are uncomfortable providing mouth care for Leon as it always leads to coughing or choking episodes. Leon's teeth are covered with heavy debris and plaque and he has very bad breath. After taking the mouth care training, the staff started to utilize the mop-as-you-go method with a moist toothbrush, a washcloth, and a cup of warm water. The first brushing took about 10 minutes or so to remove the heavy debris. This time included breaks for Leon to relax and swallow that reduced his coughing. Staff soon had future brushings down to about five minutes and anxiety around mouth care was reduced for Leon and the care staff. Do you have an opportunity to brush someone else's teeth? or to have someone brush your teeth. This activity is for the participant to experience the loss of independence. Having someone else brush your teeth can feel very personal and invasive. It is a direct care experience. You will notice feelings of being the caregiver and being the care recipient. Things to think about the loss of independence and control, awkwardness, embarrassment, not knowing what to do to help the care provider, fear, even anger. Are there sensations of pain, pressure, choking? Most find that the pressure used to brush their own teeth is too much when brushing another person's teeth. Seniors have more fragile gum tissue that requires thorough but gentle brushing. How do you deal with the resistance from the patients? Gentle touch, soft speech, simple explanation. What would it feel like for someone else to brush your teeth? If you have an opportunity to participate in a peer brushing, go for it. It is a very important learning experience as a caregiver. Mouth care products. The next series of slides will discuss recommendations and cautions for mouth care products. Toothbrushes, toothpaste, dry mouth products, club soda, lip moisturizers, mouthwashes, and mouth swabs. You could refer to the guidelines for mouth and denture care products selection and storage, which is a handout for this section. The toothbrush. It is the safest product for mouth care. Recommended toothbrushes ideally have a strong handle, soft or ultra soft bristles, straight evenly cut bristles, a compact narrow head. The strong handle can withstand biting forces and the toothbrush has no removable parts. The soft or ultra soft bristles clean the teeth, gums, tongue, and tissues, remove pocketed food or debris from the mouth, and it can be used to apply moisture to tissues in the mouth or to the lips. The ultra soft brush can clean the tissues of the mouth of residents who have no teeth under their dentures. 
the compact narrow head may be easier to insert into the mouth and may be more effective at reaching difficult spaces. Toothbrushes not recommended. They have a large head and are more difficult to insert into the mouth and more difficult to access all areas of the mouth comfortably. Medium and hard bristles can cause damage to the gums, teeth, and tissues in the mouth. Weak or brittle handled toothbrushes may be bitten and broken into pieces. Clean the brushes under running water to remove all toothpaste and debris. Store in a cup or holder with the bristles pointing up and air dry the bristles between use to kill bacteria. The toothbrushes on the right are examples of strong handled, soft bristled and narrow headed toothbrushes. Types of toothbrushes available from left to right the electric toothbrush with a head that screws on and off, an electric toothbrush with a head that pulls off easily, the Collis Curved Toothbrush. It has three rows of bristles to clean the inside, top, and outside surfaces of the teeth at the same time. A soft, flat, narrow-headed, and a longer-handled toothbrush. And the last one on the right, a soft, flat, bristled, narrow head and shorter handled toothbrush. Please note, the electric toothbrushes may be tolerated by some residents with good swallowing control and high cognitive function. Electric toothbrushes are sometimes not tolerated by those with dementia. Electric toothbrushes may be difficult for residents to turn off and on by themselves and staff have concerns with saliva spraying around when the toothbrush is on and not in the resident's mouth. Be aware of the head of the toothbrush. There is a caution if it is easily pulled off or bitten and broken into pieces by the resident. These pieces can be choked on or swallowed by the resident. Use a strong handled toothbrush if there is a risk of the electric toothbrush head being broken or bitten off. Talk to the family about the best toothbrush for your resident. When choosing a toothpaste, choose a toothpaste that is appropriate for the resident's needs. Consider the resident's situation, their ability to spit, their risk of choking, and their risk for tooth decay. Residents with swallowing or choking risks should avoid using regular toothpaste that contains sodium lauryl sulfate, or SLS, a detergent that breaks down saliva but creates a lot of foam that is hard for the resident to spit out. When there is less foam, you as the caregiver can see better as you brush, the resident doesn't need to spit out as much, and there is less risk of choking or aspirating. In a dry mouth with less saliva, along with the fluoride, calcium and phosphate minerals will be beneficial to the teeth. The examples in the slide are the Biotene brand and Sensodyne's Pronamel. Both brands contain fluoride and have no sodium lauryl sulfate. The risk for tooth decay increases when the resident has a dry mouth, has many exposed root surfaces, has difficulty clearing their mouth from food, has any dietary needs that require them to eat more often during the day, or they have many drinks with natural and added sugar throughout the day. You would use a toothpaste with fluoride. If the resident has a dry mouth with less saliva, Use a toothpaste with calcium and phosphate as well as the fluoride. Examples are the biotin and the Sensodyne's Repair and Protect. Some dental professionals may make specific toothpaste recommendations for the resident, including Ricaldent, which is a calcium phosphate mineral replacement paste. The MI paste is a mineral replacement paste dispensed professionally by the dentist. 
Prevident is a toothpaste with extra fluoride that has been shown to be very effective at reducing decay. The chlorhexidine brushing gel or oral rinse may be prescribed by the patient's dentist to reduce the amount of bacteria in the mouth that causes tooth decay, gingivitis, and periodontal disease. Dry mouth. Dry mouth or xerostomia is not a part of normal aging. Dry mouth is a side effect of many medications, dehydration, mouth breathing, and some medical conditions. Dry mouth may cause discomfort and possible burning mouth pain for your resident. Encourage sipping water throughout the day to relieve dry mouth symptoms. There are many non-prescription products on the market for helping people with dry mouth. The products include toothpaste with no sodium lauryl sulfate, saliva replacement sprays, liquids or gels, and mouthwashes. The brands that you may find are Biotin, Mouth Coat, and the moisture spray. Chewing sugar-free gum with xylitol such as Theragum or Trident Extra Care or sugarless candy like X-Pure Mints can also help counter dry mouth. However, there is a caution. The gum and the mints are not recommended for those who have issues with their jaw or TMJ. It is not recommended for those with complete or partial dentures and not recommended if there is a choking or aspiration risk for your resident. Also, do not use lemon glycerin swabs for dry mouth. The lemon can erode or take away the minerals in the teeth and weaken the tooth structure. Also, it is very drying to the tissues. Club soda can be used instead of water for daily mouth care. Choose club soda instead of toothpaste when appropriate for the resident's needs. Dip the toothbrush in the club soda for initial cleaning of heavy plaque and debris. The club soda can be used to break up thick mucus secretions and buildup. For palliative care or residents with mucositis from radiation or chemotherapy or residents who are on oxygen therapy, the club soda has a soothing quality for the mouth that regular water does not provide because the pH of the club soda is similar to that of the saliva. For palliative care, brush or moisten the mouth every two hours. Always lubricate the resident's lips before and after performing mouth care. This will increase the comfort for the resident and reduce agitation and resistance. Use water-based lip treatment products like mucogel or KY jelly, the Biotin Oral Balance Gel, or Burt's Bees or the EOS Lip Moisturizing Products. Avoid petroleum-based lip balm products. Should I use Vaseline or a petroleum jelly? But we've always used that.
do not use the Vaseline or petroleum-based products for moisturizing lips. These products actually dry the tissue rather than moisturize. They may cause lip inflammation to open sores and open wounds. They are not recommended for patients on oxygen as the petroleum is flammable and they can be inhaled by elderly, frail, or unwell residents who may have a pre-existing lung condition such as COPD or asthma and can contribute to the development of a petroleum or oil-based pneumonia. All over-the-counter mouth rinses for any purpose should be alcohol all free to prevent drying of the mouth tissues. The original Listerine has 27% alcohol and Scope has 19% alcohol. Choose from products that are alcohol free, contain fluoride, and are formulated for dry mouth if needed. The fluoride remineralizes the tooth enamel, reduces the ability of plaque to produce tooth decay acids, and increase the concentration of fluoride in the saliva. Higher strength mouth rinses may be prescribed by a dentist or physician. Caution regarding mouthwashes. Discontinue use of any mouth rinse if the resident cannot follow directions to spit out or if the resident swallows all these liquids. Mouth swabs or toothettes are not recommended, although they are often easily accessible or offered as a replacement for a toothbrush. These foam swabs do not remove any soft or hard deposits on the teeth or gums. Their only purpose should be for applying medication or moisturizing the lips or the soft tissues. There is a caution regarding the mouth swabs. They are easily broken and the foam swab can pull away from the stick and they pose a choking risk for the resident. They are single use only and the toothbrush remains the best device for mouth care. <laughs>